He has no jobs bill. I talked about President Obama in the first four weeks, four million jobs. He has no jobs bill. So he's got to talk about the press. He has no jobs bill. So he has to talk about kids, transgender kids in school. He has no jobs bill. So he has to talk about uh, immigrants and, and, and have a ban on Muslims coming to the country. So all of this is a deflection from the fact he has done nothing. I hate to sound like a broken record, but folks, we have another record. The Dow Jones Industrials, the 12th straight time it has breached record territory. That is the big story today, as well as defense stocks soaring on news that President Trump Trump wants to dramatically up spending on defense by about $54 billion a year. And in case you're counting, we have now added close to $3 trillion in market wealth since his election. But try telling that to Nancy Pelosi. Tomorrow, 40 days after his inauguration, President Trump and the Republican Congress will have not lifted a finger uh, to create jobs or raise wages for hardworking American families. Of course, that leaves aside this uh, $3 trillion or so in market wealth that seems to have benefited everyone in the country right now, indirectly or directly pegged to those markets. FBN's Blake Berman now on how the White House is responding to all this. Blake. Hi there, Neil. And when you listen to the president, he often touts how companies are keeping their manufacturing plants here in the U.S., investing here in the U.S., and thus creating jobs here in the U.S. However, the House Minority Leader, uh, Nancy Pelosi, earlier today leveled a new criticism, essentially saying, where is the jobs bill? Pelosi saying, quote, five weeks into his administration, President Trump has not introduced a single jobs bill, end quote. So earlier this afternoon at the White House press briefing, I asked the press secretary, Sean Spicer, read him that quote and asked him to respond to that criticism. You've heard these companies come in over and over again. The automakers, the airlines, Sprint. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on of people saying to the president, because of your agenda, because of your vision, we're willing to commit to hiring additional people to manufacture more. You know, that, that's how jobs are created. It's not through the government. Neil Spicer also contends that repealing and replacing Obamacare, tax reform and regulatory reform will lead to jobs as well. It is interesting listening to those in Washington to define success or jobs by what the government can do, a jobs bill in this measure. But when you think of at least eight different Fortune 500 companies that have committed to expanding factories or facilities and hiring thousands of U.S. workers, maybe that is the way to go about it. Kathy Aru is the Catalina Magazine publisher. Emily Jashinsky joining us as well, Washington Examiner uh, writer. And we also have Scott Martin of King's U Asset Management. Uh, Scott, I, I would sooner trust those companies committing money Money to hire folks that the government committing a jobs program to try to do the same but what did you think of that criticism I, I think it's incredible Neil I mean Nancy Pelosi is deeply in la la land she should spend less time dancing wildly in the moonlight because I think this is actually the perfect thing she said Neil not introducing the jobs bill is a positive it's not up to the government to force companies to create jobs how they're gonna create jobs is lower taxes less regulation and hello listening to the CEOs which is what does Donald Trump is doing so far, that's what the economy needs and that's what we're going to see be very effective. I mean, I think for a lot of free marketers, the term job creation bill is an oxymoron in and of itself. I think what's far more important is you have an environment where several companies say they're going to keep their jobs here or companies say they're going to keep their jobs here in the first place. I think the Democrats also need to be careful. They're coming out here like Chuck Schumer saying, oh, the president's all bluster. He hasn't done anything. And then at the same time, they're talking in these apocalyptic, hyperbolic terms about how he's destroying the the country. That doesn't make sense. They have to pick one or the other. This won't fly with the public if they keep this counter, this, uh, you know, contradictory messaging strategy. It's not going to work. I think everyone's waiting for the Paul Ryan tax reform, the corporate tax reform. I think that's what companies are getting ready for. That's what they're excited about. I don't think Trump has done anything necessarily that's excited anyone. And I, I agree with Nancy Pelosi, who I've interviewed three times in the past. Well, someone I mean, must be excited. I mean, we'll go up three trillion dollars. That's just more than like a, you know, a Walmart special. With, the ball was rolling already with the Obama administration, and this is just the results of what happened with the well, Obama wait a minute, administration. Wait a minute, I need to be fair. I'm not going to take sides with you here, but I will say that this, you know, nearly $3 trillion in wealth is since the election of Donald Trump. That's more than just coincidental, don't you think? I think it could be coincidental. Oh, I don't think okay, well, there, that solves that problem.